Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Today we're gonna to take on a topic of how does a narcissist describe a relationship that ended? I bet you wanna know that and get into their little heads. Please subscribe and keep getting content like this twice a week, but let's go back to that question. How does a narcissist describe a relationship that ended? Some of you already know the answer to this and you know why? Because you were in a relationship with a narcissist and they talked about their former relationship. I cannot count how many times I have worked with people who are in a relationship with a narcissist and for a long time they bought the narcissist story that their, their ex was absolutely insane and stalked them and harassed them and was obsessed with them and did all kinds of wacky stuff and because you were sort of into the narcissist you wanted to believe the narrative. And you're like, well, I'm going to be the same new sexy person in this person's life. No madness here. Time goes on. Narcissistic abuse goes on. A little bit of love bombing, some discarding, a lot of gaslighting. And you're like, oh my God, I got to get out of this. Or they discard you. But either way, the relationship ends. And I bet sometimes you wonder, what do they tell people? Now, you may hear about it. You may have enough flying monkeys that they've recruited or enough other people in your life watching them or even see it on social media. What narcissists are amazing at doing is always creating a revised and edited narrative that suits them. They do a few things in a relationship when it ends. Number one they will say that they were the victim. They may even make up a story about you cheating or being shady or dodgy or doing something bad to them. So they can go into the world as a victim. Oh, you're not going to believe what the, my ex did. She cheated on me. And then the next person says, oh, I'd never cheat on you. And they play that victim card beautifully. Number two is the swagger. You know, like... She was putting on weight, she was this, she was that, he was this, he was that. It's like, I grew out of that. Like they, they really seem like they're just too cool for school and they got out of that relationship. Number three is the smear campaign. In that case, the narcissist paints the ex as completely unhinged. They were stalking, they were obsessed, they were always accusing me of stuff, they were losing grip with reality. They gaslight you to the world in essence. They describe you as something you're not and you're not even there to defend yourself. They portray you as something that is absolutely untrue. That third scenario can be really unsettling because that puts you out in the world in a way you don't want to be perceived. Number one thing to keep in mind, whomever continues to spend time with your narcissist or hopefully ex-narcissist, do you really want to spend time with them? That means that they haven't figured out how difficult and damaged your narcissist is, so maybe they're just not smart enough to spend time with you. So choose your friends wisely. If they can't see it, step away from that. But that whole sense that the way they're going to describe a, a relationship that ended is always going to be in a way that makes them look good, whether as a person who was wronged, as a person who's just too good for it, and most likely in a way that defames you and makes you look bad. If you honestly think a narcissist is gonna go and meet a new partner or talk to other people in the world and say, yeah, I wasn't a really good guy. I cheated on her and I lied to her and I psychologically abused her and that's why we're not together. Mm -mm. That's not gonna happen in this lifetime. So obviously that would certainly help you think, okay, that's great, they got some insight. But if they'd had insight, they would have had it with you, okay? So the way they describe the relationships that have gone out of their life will always make you look bad, will always make them look good, and will have no resemblance to reality. This can be particularly difficult when you see their little sob stories or weird stories or slanderous stories on social media. You know, those passive aggressive comments they write, 
Don't you love when you manage to get out of a relationship that clipped your wings and now you can fly, fly high to the sky or something completely unhinged like that? You're thinking fly high to the sky, like what does that mean? They'll portray you as the sandbag that was sinking their dreams to others and that will often be framed against some bizarre sunset or two martinis on a bar. This is when you have to say, I dodged a bullet. Because if they were able to tell this story about our relationship after it ended, what were they saying while we were together? Narcissists are masters of manipulating the truth or frankly lying. In fact, there was a great line I recently heard. How do you know a narcissist is lying? Their lips are moving. And that's pretty much it. They lie a lot because it helps them protect that insecure core of theirs. They sell these dishonest stories about how their relationships end because it makes them feel better about themselves. So all of these things are being done to protect that fragile core ego interior of them. Once you get out, hard as it is, hard as it is to get them out of your head, hard as it is to wonder, will the next person get a better version? They're hearing these terrible stories about me. They're going to go off and have a happy future and laugh about me. Trust me, you'll be the one to get the last laugh. They will not move into a brighter future. The next person will suffer the same way you did. It's just a matter of time. So when you wonder what they're saying about your relationship when they move forward, the only thing you can be completely sure of is that what they're saying is a complete work of fiction. Hold on to your reality. You know what the true story of that relationship is. Do not, do not allow the narcissist to keep stealing your reality even after the relationship is done. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, thanks for subscribing. Please join us and subscribe if you haven't already. We give new content every Monday and Friday and as often as we can, uh, Instagram and YouTube lives on Tuesdays. Bye-bye now.